Okay. A charge of 100 nanocoulombs is located at a certain point in free space. Um, notice that free space is going to mean that epsilon is going to be equal to epsilon naught, right? That's just a given. Um, it wants us to find a locus of all points where the x component of the electric field equals 500. Okay, so first thing we can do is find out a vector between these two points. So vector AP is equal to um, this would be, you could take P minus A, so it would be X minus a negative 1, which is plus 1, Y minus 1, and Z minus 3. Let me see, let me see if I can... Okay, so find the magnitude. I'm not going to do it. That's just the square root of these three babies right here. Plus one squared, one minus one squared, z minus three squared. Okay. Let me zoom out a little bit to make this a little new some space. Okay, so now we can find the electric field. E equals remember we're using q over four pi epsilon naught r squared. That's our formula. So our Q we know is 100 nanocoulombs because the problem said that. Okay, that's that. Um, 4 pi epsilon not stays the same. And then R squared, this is our R right here. So since this is square root and not squared, we can just cancel the 2 and just write it in like that. So let me write it like this. X plus 1 squared plus Y minus 1 squared plus... Z minus 3 squared. And then we also have the, um, the vector x plus 1, y minus 1, z minus 3. And this is over, because remember, we're just multiplying it by the unit vector. We multiply this equation here by the unit vector of AP over AP uh, magnitude. And that gives us the correct direction. So, this would be x plus 1 squared. This would be y minus 1 squared. And z minus 3 squared. And I know it's cutting off a little bit, but you can just um, know that this is z minus 3 over here, all the way in the end there. Sorry, I know it's getting a little cut off, but... Um, Let me change my color so I can show you. This term and this term are equivalent. And it's the same components up here. You know, the same x, y, and z components. So next thing we need to do, we know that we can combine these two, right? We've done this many times. It's going to turn into this term to the three halves. But also, notice that the, the problem is asking for the x component. So we don't really need to worry about the y and z. So we could just, we could effectively just cross these freaking things out and not even worry about them. So e to the x would then equal, still have our 100 nanocoulombs, 4 pi epsilon naught, still have that. Now this term is going to be to the 3 halves because we're combining the two. Let me uh, make this a bracket. X plus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared plus z minus 3 squared. And this is going to be to the 3 halves. Okay. What's up, semi semi? Yeah, and then uh, this is going to be x plus 1. Hold on, give me one minute. And then, 
Um, Where's the mom? She's upstairs. What? Where? In her bedroom taking a nap? Mm-hmm. Oh, I need some fresh air. My head's hurting. Your head's hurting? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so we take the X component, and we notice this is going to be equal to 500, because that's what we want. We want it to be equal to 500. So we could change this right here. This is going to be 500. So 500 equals this baloney right here. So we copy that over. Copy that over. There it is. Are you gonna grab it on there? Yeah, see how we copied it? Pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. This is a uh, physics. Okay. See you later. See you later. That was my uh, cousin. Pretty cool. Anyway, uh, what, what am I doing? Uh, oh, this is the, this is it. You solved the problem because look. You have, you have the locus of points. X, Y, and Z aren't really determined. They just wanted it... They just wanted the array of points that could possibly fall on the... Uh, that could make this X component of electric field equal to 500. And that's, that's what this equation tells us. It says... If you plug in a point and it... Um, equals 500, then it is a locus of points where the... X component of electric field is 500. That's kind of what it says. So the next question of part B follows up with that, and it says find Y1 if P negative 2 Y1 3 lies on that locus. So we know that this equation will be true. This is true at P of, now i got to remember my point again, what is it? Negative 2, Y, and 3. And what does it want again? Um, oh, it wants us to find Y. Y1. So all we'd have to do is simply plug this in. 500 equals 100 and X is negative 2 plus 1 is 1. Oh, negative 1, sorry. 4 pi epsilon naught. Again, uh, you're going to have a negative 1 here, and it's squared, so it's going to be a 1 plus y minus 1. That is technically a y1 minus 1. And then z is 3 minus 3 is 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. And from there, you would get that, uh, you could bring this over and get negative 500 over 100 nanocoulombs equals to 1 over, this would just be a 4 pi epsilon. And then you could, uh, you could keep solving this. I don't really need to do the rest of this. I'm not going to waste my time doing the rest of this. But you basically just solve for y here. It's it's a simple algebra problem at this point. And you would get um, y at two points, one point six nine or point three one. And you'd get y to be equal to one point six nine or because it's squared, remember you're gonna have two solutions. Or zero point three one. And there you go. Now you know where uh, where y would be at that point if it lies on the locus. So there you go. That's the whole problem. Thanks for watching, and uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm just joking. Goodbye.